All right. Well, hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Glad you're here joining us. I have with me Dr. Brian Stenzler, and we're going to be discussing how to optimize the health of your children and as well as how to optimize your health as well. All this information will be relevant, not just for your kids, but for you too. And let me go ahead and introduce Dr. Stenzler. So Dr. Brian Stenzler, he has been helping families live with abundant health since becoming a family wellness chiropractor in 1998. And that was actually, we, we went to the, the same school and you graduated, I think a year before me, because I graduated in 1999. You went to life right. as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah. And uh, Dr. Stenzler has served his profession in numerous roles, including president of the California Chiropractic Association from 2014 to 2016. He has worked with thousands of families in his dream wellness centers in New York and San Diego that are filled with newborns, toddlers, teenagers, as well as their parents. So early in his career, Dr. Stenzler was an adjunct neurology instructor for the New York College for Health Professions in Long Island, New York. And Dr. Stenzler uses a vast knowledge of the nervous system and everything he does, whether it be adjusting patients, providing lifestyle advice, or speaking to audiences. And he's also the author of Dream Wellness, The Five Keys to Raising Kids for a Lifetime of Physical and Mental Health. So in that book, he provides hundreds of lifestyle tips that help families reduce and neutralize chemical, physical, and emotional stressors found in everyday life. Thanks for joining us, Doc. Thanks for having me on the show. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Yeah, same, same here. And um, yeah, I, I read your book. I, I can't say I've read the entire book just because it is, it's a, it's a great book, but it's a pretty big book. It's over 400 pages, correct? That's right. It's 460 pages. But thank goodness for the dream score. That'll help people get through it in less than an hour. <laughs> yeah. So it's important to mention you don't have to read the book from cover to, to end. So yeah, right. we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about the, the dream score. And so why don't we start out by you just telling everyone how you became a chiropractor and also how and why you developed the dream lifestyle? You know, um, it's funny because if you asked me when I was growing up, if I'd be a chiropractor, I'd be the last thing. I didn't even know what a chiropractor was when I was growing up. And I wrestled and did a lot of martial arts through high school. My gosh, I could have used it, but I knew nothing about it. And um, I was in school. Uh, initially, I was going to college. I thought I was going to be a movie producer. Uh, I was doing film and, and theater and all that. Was not the right path for me. Uh, I was spending a lot of time in the gym, you know, training people. And so physical therapy was introduced to me. And I'm like, oh, wow, it's kind of like taking personal training to a whole nother level. It was before they had a doctor program, but they had a master's program. I was going to go to Syracuse and get my uh, master's in physical therapy. Uh, switched all my classes from theater to pre-med. Grades went up, which was crazy because I was a terrible science student. Uh, but there's something about the passion of the human body. And then I was on one of my breaks uh, from college. And my mom was dating this guy named Nat, who was a retired police officer for NYPD, New York Police Department. And so Nat had asked me, did you ever think about being a chiropractor? And I'm like, chiropractor? Don't they just like crack backs? I can't even pronounce the word when I read it. I didn't know what the heck it was. He's like, honestly, Brian, he goes, I don't know. But my son just started school at life outside of Atlanta. I've never seen him so happy and focused. Uh, you should probably talk to Steve and see if it might be a path for you. I'm like, sure, I'll talk to him. So I give Steve a call. He starts telling me all about the philosophy of chiropractic, about above, down, inside out, not using drugs or surgery for optimal health and lifestyle and all this stuff that I just resonated with. And it just fit in with my life and just the way I thought about health in general, but a little bit that I knew being 18, 19 years old at the time. And so I was going to meet Steve for the first time at our parents' wedding. And that week, Steve was going to take me to all these different chiropractic offices to just kind of explore the profession and, and really get to know it. So a day and a half before the wedding, Nat, Steve's father, drops dead suddenly. And uh, I end up meeting Steve at his dad's funeral instead of his dad's wedding. And I give Steve a hug and, you know, it's like, nice to meet you. You know, it's weird. He was, you know, 36 hours shy of my, being my stepbrother. And now we're at his dad's funeral. And he says to me, he's like, so what time Monday am I going to pick you up? I was like shocked. I couldn't believe it. This guy was on such a, a mission, you know, to really bring the right people into the profession and stuff, you know, refers to it as a calling. You've heard that before being a chiropractor yourself. And so that week he 
spent that time taking me all around chiropractic offices, um, introducing me to the profession. And I was sold, you know, right there. And then I, he took me to this guy, Pasquale Sarasoli in Brooklyn. I didn't understand half of what he said, but changed my life. And Steve and I lived together for a year and a half, you know, be, until he graduated. We've become best of friends. I was the best man in his wedding. So, I mean, God works in interesting ways. His dad, Nat, was an angel is what I refer to, but it put me on a certain path. And uh, that was where the whole chiropractic thing came from, resonated with me. And the dream thing kind of came with it too, because Nat woke up that morning having no idea he was going to take his last breath that day. He thought he was healthy. And so what did he base that on? He based it on how he felt. He didn't have any known diseases in his body. And so it's where, and Steve and I talked about this a lot, you know, talk about what really makes a healthy person. The World Health Organization defines it as a, as a state of complete physical, mental, and cell, social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Well, how do you get that? How do you obtain health? You know, people say, well, you have to eat right, you have to exercise, have a good attitude, sleep, all this other stuff. And that's where we put together the whole acronym of DREAM, of diet, relaxation, exercise, being an adjustment, and mental wellness. When you live a wellness lifestyle, which I know we'll touch on in a little bit, that is when you could actually believe that you're healthy, right? And that's where the dream score comes in. You know, you took the dream score, you did great. You're a healthy guy. But there are people that talk to me, and I've been practicing over 23 years, that think that they're healthy because they don't have any symptoms. I put them through the dream score. They're scoring in the 60s and 70s, and wow. that's not health. And this is how people end up dropping dead of a heart attack, getting a terminal diagnosis, uh, you know, all these different types of health issues that they wake up in the morning thinking they're fine. And then they find out that they've got something devastating. And it doesn't mean that all these diseases are avoidable. It just means that because you don't have symptoms does not mean that you're healthy. So the whole idea of what we'll refer to in this conversation about a salutogenic lifestyle is about putting the odds in your favor. So you're taking action to not live by chance, but to live by choice. All right. Well said. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's some story with, uh, you know, with uh, you know, that. The, the dad, you know, passing away, you know, 36 hours, uh, you know, before the wedding and uh, it was still, you know, great that he got together and then you were uh, roommates for, you said, a year and a half. And, and uh, a half, yeah. yeah, it sounds like uh, he taught you a lot. And uh, yeah, so. So as you know, I deal with uh, with people with thyroid, autoimmune thyroid conditions, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, and honestly, most of my patients are adults. But one thing I have been seeing more and more younger people, more and your, more and more children and teenagers developing chronic health conditions, including autoimmune conditions such as Graves and Hashimoto's. Can you talk about why that is? Why are we seeing more a, a higher prevalence of autoimmunity and other chronic health conditions and, and children, teenagers. Sure. So, so this is going to be based on opinion and stuff I've learned over practice years in practice. They say that they don't know what caused autoimmune problems and all this stuff. We've read all that stuff. Is it congenital? Is it genetic? Is it something that was triggered in the lifestyle? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. Um, I think that lifestyle more than anything else, uh, when we don't adapt to a chemical, physical, or emotional stressor, that is going to cause our nervous system to not work as well as it can. And so that those are chemical, physical, emotional stressors are basically triggers that will, you know, ultimately bombard us. And if we are not able to overcome those or avoid them, it can cause our nervous system to break down, to not work as well as it can. It can cause vertebral subluxation, you know, where bones misalign puts irritation on the nervous system, but ultimately it could also put us in sympathetic dominance, you know, in that fight or flight. And that causes the immune system to break down. Uh, and I find that there are, you know, there's always been physical stressors in life. You know, you go back to caveman years, you know, there's always been that. There's always been emotional stressors, right? Where's your food gonna come from or how did you do on your test, right? There's always been those. I think our society right now has more chemical stressors than we've ever had before. I think a lot Agreed. comes down to the foods that we're eating, the way that everything is processed. That's a huge factor. Uh, I think that, you know, I, I, I don't say anything bad about medications. I think we're over medicating our country. I think that, you know, that's the solution for everything. It's certainly not inside out. It's much more outside in, which we'll talk about in a bit. 
Um, so I think that that's a major chemical stressor. And if you do take a medication, which in many cases are life-saving and they're necessary, you've got to counterbalance that with something else that's more natural that's going to help you adapt to that chemical stressor. So that's the deal is, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. It's like if there's a fire in your house, you need the firefighters to come and to, you know, they're going to, they're going to spray it with water. They're going to use the axes. They're going to tear down your house because they want to save you, your possessions, your home, the neighborhood, whatever it is. But then you've got to rebuild it. And the problem is too many people are taking these, they're dealing with these chemical stressors and they're not rebuilding afterwards. Pollution that we breathe in, another chemical stressor, it's hard to avoid. Dr um, foods that we eat that we might have, um, you know, an allergy to, or might be genetically modified, all the refined, like I was talking about with processed foods. So there's so many different chemical stressors that I really believe in our day and age now, uh, it is more prevalent than anywhere else. And so those are triggering, I believe that that's what's triggering more. Um, and that's just a piece of the lifestyle stuff. You know, the, the adults that are, that you're taking care of, that are your listeners here and everything, they have to understand that their kids have the same genetic makeup that they have. So if they have an autoimmune problem, like hyperthyroidism, or hypothyroidism, hyper or hypo, it doesn't matter. It's too much or too little. Same thing with like bradycardia and tachycardia, the heart beating too fast or too slow. What's going on there? And then there's a drug for it. There's a medication to slow it down or to speed it up. Right. And we've got to get into what could we do naturally because these, the parents that are listening right now, your kids have the same genetic makeup as you. So they might be even more predisposed to it if they encounter the same triggers. So it's so important that whatever you're doing to, you know, keep everything at bay, that you do that for your children too. Not necessarily if you're on medication, you don't give them medication if they don't need it. But all the lifestyle things, the diet modifications that you make, the exercises that you're doing, that those lifestyle changes that you make, I highly encourage you finding ways to get that into your children's life no matter what age they are. Yeah, you bring up some excellent points with, especially with, with both, as you mentioned, with hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, hyperthyroidism, Graves, you know, there's different approaches. And some people would, if they have low thyroid, they might need, need to take thyroid hormone replacements. And a lot of my patients with hyperthyroidism take antithyroid medication, which could be quite harsh on the body. And the problem is that that's all people do, or a lot of people, people are following me, a lot of them are either currently taking it more of a natural approach or at least are interested but just in general a lot of people just take the medication and that's all they do they don't do anything to improve their environment reduce their toxic load and i, I agree with you that that's one one of the main things that has changed over the years is just our environment has become more and more toxic more and more chemicals and that's yeah so th that was uh, some excellent points hmm. and I mean, you mentioned, uh, so in your book, you talk about outside in, inside, mm -hmm. out, um, inside out approach. So why don't we talk more about that, as it, especially as it relates to thyroid health, but just, just overall, not everything has to pertain to thyroid health. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I know your, thi your community is thyroid and you, the thyroid people need to listen to this. This is extremely important to really think about um, the paradigm. I, I, the chapter in my book is called about Paradigm Shifts. And it's about what paradigm are you living in? The allopathic paradigm is very outside in, um, basically saying that whatever's not working from the outside, we could put something into the body and change the chemistry versus inside out is working with what we already have, what, what we're born with, our own pharmacopoeia to bring out the best within us. Um, so that's allopathic versus more of a vitalistic or mechanistic versus vitalistic. And I'll get into that as well. But the first thing about the allopathic model, and by the way, Neither one is better than the other. They both work, but and, and most people live in both worlds. But think about, for the listeners, where do you spend most of your time? In the outside-in allopathic or in the inside-out vitalistic, right? The outside-in, the, the, the allopathic is much more artificial than natural. It's, it's, it's produced in a lab. It's, it's a drug. It's something synthesized, synthetic. Again, may save a life, but it's not something that just grows on a tree. It's not something that you do naturally that comes that just shows up in nature. So that's something to keep in mind, natural versus artificial. Um, the outside in approach is much more about battling disease. Let's, let's, let's beat this thing as opposed to building health, right? Uh, people ask me all the time, you know, if I have this, you know, can you treat this problem? Can you treat that problem? Well, for 23 years that I practiced chiropractic, I say I didn't treat a single condition other than maybe subluxation. Uh, what did I do was I helped build health through proper functioning nervous system 
and then the problem would go away. I'm not looking to beat down the disease. I'm looking to build up the human being. And that's a very different approach. Um, and you know, the way that we speak and the way that we think, those words that we use are extremely important. So it may sound like semantics for some, but it's totally different. It's a totally different meaning. Um, one is the outside in is very much about intervene, intervention versus connection. You know, intervention is we're gonna get in and again, attack whatever it is. Connection is basically helping your body express itself. I'm a spiritual person. I believe that we're created by God and that we're born with exactly the right amount of organs. We're not born with too many organs and too few drugs. So we just need to be connected with source and connected with, you know, whatever spiritual thing that you have connected to your earth. Um, I refer to kind of as atonement being at one mint. Um, and we could get into that in much more detail. I have that in the book. Um, outside in is a very physical process versus being emotional, mental, physical, and, and um, spiritual. So we're talking about dealing with thoughts, traumas, and toxins, which is all part of, you know, everything. It's not just a physical thing like, okay, um, my thyroid is not working right. Let's do something to the thyroid um, and, and just deal with that. Let's look at the whole person. And that's where the word holistic comes from, which is really important to understand. Um, you can delve deep into that too. Um, mechanistic approach versus the vitalistic approach. So a mechanistic approach is basically saying the body is a machine. That's what, that's what um, Dr. Frankenstein was doing. Everyone thinks Frankenstein's the monster, by the way. Frankenstein is the doctor. Dr. Frankenstein wanted to take um, a corpse, give it enough electrical juice and turn it into a human being, right? Give it life. And by the way, the monster is actually called Adam. People don't realize that, with, but with Halloween, you know, um, people should know. Frankenstein, he was the real monster because he created that monster. But um, we know that there is something other than electricity that animates us and some call it life force, chi, spirit, God, whatever term you want to use. There's something that makes us different. If you were to take your hand and you were to cut it and you were to take a steak and you were to cut it and you come back to the steak in a week, right? What is that steak going to look like? It's going to be still cut and it's going to be rotted. And we look at your hand and it's going to be healing or healed. What is the difference? They're both meat. They're both flesh. The difference is life. So a mechanistic approach is looking more about the machinery as opposed to the vitalistic, the whole person being something animated, something alive, something different. Uh, the mechanistic uh, approach or the outside in approach looks to replace as opposed to restore. Let's get your thyroid working better. You know, it's not about taking the thyroid out. In some cases, you have to you have to do that. Yeah, you, you got to do whatever you have to do with the thyroid, right? I get that, but not in all cases. Not in most cases. If we could actually restore the proper function of the thyroid through the proper care, the type of care that you give your patients, you know, all those clients and stuff like that, like you're able to save. I can imagine how many thyroids you save, how many lives that you save because you're restoring the proper function of it and you're doing it from an inside-out approach. You're not looking at it as just what's going on with the thyroid. You're looking at the whole body, all the systems. Um, and you're not just treating the symptoms, which is very common in the allopathic model, but you're actually getting to the cause of the problem, right? Now, exactly. we can't always get to the very first cause because if the cause was a chemical stressor you couldn't adapt to, well, then, you know, at least you got to get to the cause of the, the closest cause that you can, but you're not treating the symptom. And then uh, one, of, one of the final parts is about uh, it being in the allopathic model and the outside in model, it's a very chemical process. And this is what I was talking about before, kind of in the introduction, is that the way they practice medicine typically is, and I'm talking about, you know, treating chronic disease and stuff like that, is if something is not working right, they find a pill or a potion to make it work better. So if something is doing too much, they give you a drug to slow it down. If something is too slow, they do something to speed it up. And again, you see that with the thyroid all the time. They do opposites and everything. Um, and that's fine. That saves lives and everything. But in real life, we're looking at not only the chemistry of life, but also the electricity. Because what controls the chemistry is the nervous system, right? How do glands know how, much, how, much, how many hormones to produce and stuff, right? The brain has to tell it. And so we have to look at the electricity, the electrical impulses going to those organs and glands as well. And if we leave it out, we're missing a piece of it. So that's something that's also very important, a big differentiation between the outside in approach and the inside approach, inside out approach. So I know it's kind of a mouthful, but I think it's important when we're thinking about the paradigms, where are we living our lives? Are we seeing ourselves more in just constantly treating diseases, battling disease, 
you know, getting rid of the symptoms, or are we trying to live a salutogenic lifestyle and salutogenesis as opposed to pathogenesis? Pathogenesis is about the creation of disease. We're very good at that as Americans. Salutogenesis is taking divisive, decisive action to create and build health, not just to prevent disease, that's prevention, but to promote health and wellness throughout an entire lifetime. All right. I, I agree with everything you said. And yeah, like you said, you, you, it was a mouthful. You, you said a lot, but I think it's important what you said. And I definitely agree with everything, but especially when you mentioned that the focus, like in the case of thyroid conditions, the focus shouldn't be on the thyroid. Sometimes it's necessary to take the medication, but you want to address the underlying cause. You want to correct the underlying imbalances. And one thing, though, I wanted to ask you, so you mentioned before, which I also agree with, of course, about we're not born with too many body parts, too many organs, but how about if someone's watching this and if they already had their thyroid gland removed or if they, you know, uh, if they don't have a gallbladder or they had their appendix out and they might be a little bit down saying, oh, I, you know, maybe I shouldn't have had that appendix taken out or my tonsils removed. So what, what advice would you give them? Well, the first thing I would say is regret is definitely, that just is gonna steal your happiness from today. So don't even think about it. Everything that you've done, you did right. Successful people don't always make the right decision, but they make every decision right. And so whatever you did, it was for life saving. It was for whatever you needed to do. So never have regrets for what you did, but focus on what you're going to do because that's the only thing you can change. That's the only thing you can control. And a really good example of that is, when I was in practice, I used to do scans because we had full wellness centers. We had chiropractic, massage, yoga, Pilates, organic cooking classes, all different kinds of services, you know, probably two dozen services in our offices. And whenever anybody came in for any service at all, they got a scan uh, called surface EMG, electromyography. And mm -hmm. what that did was that measured the electrical impulse between the brain and the body of the nerve flow going to the muscles, which also go to the organs and glands. And that's why that's how I would take the chemical and electrical approach to it something unique in our dream wellness centers that we did. And I had a person come in, she was coming in for a massage and she was very skeptical. And I did the scan on her and everything showed up really clear throughout the entire body, except for T4. T4 showed up as a black line, which is beyond red. Red is bad, black is off the charts. And it was bizarre. Like it, that's never really happened where somebody's scan was all white, except for one spot of T4. And I said to her, I go, obviously you do. One thing I want to say, so T4, you mean the fourth thoracic. Because oh, it's also yeah. some people what, what the attending think of T4, there's T3 and T4, which are the thyroid hormone levels. So so yeah. again, T4 related to the spine. <laughs> Thank you. That's why I, you know, sometimes I forget I'm looking at you, I'm talking to a chiropractor, but I'm actually talking to your audience. Yes, it's the fourth thoracic vertebra. Every vertebra. Um, the vertebrae encase the spinal cord and the spinal nerves, right? Protects it. So every nerve goes to a different organ or organ system. So the nerve that comes off the spinal cord at the level of the fourth thoracic and the dorsals goes to the gallbladder, as well as other organs too, lungs, heart, and all this other stuff. So I said to her, based on what I was seeing, I'm like, you know, everything shows up really good except for this one spot here. And that's T4. And that goes, she, she asked, what organ does it go to? I said, it goes to the gallbladder you know, in particular, because that was the one thing that jumped out at me. She goes, oh, mm -hmm. well, obviously your scan doesn't work. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, I had my gallbladder removed five years ago. I'm like, oh, okay. So uh, here I am. I'm thinking like, and were you born with a faulty gallbladder? Or maybe something was going on in that area that caused your gallbladder to malfunction. So this is where I'm saying we want to get to the cause of the problem. So if somebody is seeing you as a patient and they've already had the thyroid removed, or they've had other organs removed or whatever it is, you've got to still work on the spine, the nervous system, the nutrition, the lifestyle, everything else to make sure what caused the fire is not still there. Because you can't, this is one of my mentors, Dane Donahue says, you can't medicate yourself out of something created by your lifestyle. So you could take your thyroid out, but then it's just going to go deeper. It's just like kids with tonsils. You know, they get the tonsils, then they're adenoids, then it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And they get all these other infections because whatever was causing their constant, their constant tonsillitis never went away. The problem was still there. And I refer to it as kind of like, you know, your dumpster, uh, where your dumpster, if you have garbage in the dumpster, you're going to have flies. And if you spray that dumpster with raid, those flies are going to die and they'll be gone. But if you come back two days later and the garbage is still there, there's going to be new flies. 
So what happened, you know, and that's the same thing as removing an organ, whether you're taking a drug or removing an organ, if you don't get to the cause of it, that inside out approach that you do so well, uh, they're just going to end up in that hamster wheel and end up with a different type of problem. So for those that are listening that have already done the allopathic model that have removed a, an organ or something, great, fine. You're not going to have that problem anymore. Make sure you don't have more problems and make sure mm -hmm. that you're able to um, be supported appropriately now without that organ or gland, right? And make sure that, you know, you're getting the care that you need, but be mindful of the lifestyle that you're living to help avoid and neutralize all the chemical, physical, and emotional stressors in your life that you can, you know, that you encounter on a daily basis. Yes, definitely agree. And yeah, because we get questions from people who had their thyroid gland removed and so they can't save their thyroid, but they could improve the health of the rest of their body so they prevent other conditions. Because if someone has, let's say if someone has Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, and it's th thyroidectomy more common with Graves' disease, but regardless, if you have one autoimmune condition, you're more likely to develop another autoimmune condition in the future. So if someone only gets a thyroid gland removed, they're again, not doing anything to improve their immune system health. So they are at greater risk of developing a different autoimmune condition, possibly multiple autoimmune conditions in the future. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And next your book, you mentioned one of, you, one of the chapters you talk about brainwashing. Can you take a minute or two and Brainwashing. That's a dangerous word to use right now. And I was thinking about when I was giving the titles of the chapters, I'm like, I just got to do it because it's the truth, you know? And when I came out of chiropractic school, I thought very differently than I did when I entered chiropractic school. And I had friends tell me that I was brainwashed. And at first I would get offended by it. And I was, then I realized I'm like, yes, I am brainwashed. Thank you. I've had my slate wiped clean from all the junk that's been going into my ears and eyes over the past 20 something years, you know, 25 years at that point, because we're constantly being brainwashed in terms of the input that we're getting from the media, from politicians, from teachers, mother, father, teacher, everybody's brainwashing us. They're telling us what we should know. And so I look at brainwashing as a positive thing, taking an opportunity to kind of think for yourself, to clean the slate, do your own uh, research, use intellectual honesty and come to conclusions that make sense that work for you um, as opposed to something that somebody else told you or showed you is the right way to do it uh, and you know if we don't learn to think of our think for ourselves as a nation uh, we're going to be in a lot of trouble and so i think it's really important that we make sure we're brainwashed every day in a good way yeah all right well said so before we talk about the dream score Let's, uh, can you discuss, get into greater detail about the components of the dream lifestyle? Yeah, for sure. So the, the acronym of dream of D-R-E-A-M, they're not services and they're not products, they're categories of living. And so everything you do in life or think or whatever has an impact on all five facets of wellness, all five keys. So D, like I said, it's for diet. So diet is, the, I define as everything that goes into your body from the outside world to the inside world. It's everything you eat, drink, taste, touch, smell, feel, hear. All the movies you watch and all the people you spend time with is just as much part of your diet as the food you consume. And so, you know, you think about diet. So, you know, Dr. Eric, you might tell your patients, hey, let's be mindful of your diet. Like, don't eat this, don't eat that. But we also know that if they're watching horror movies, for example, or watching the news, something that stresses them out, that's going to put them in sympathetic dominance and that's going to weaken their immune system. So our diet has to be nutritious beyond the food we consume and beverages we drink. So everything from the outside world to the inside world is part of our diet. Relaxation is giving your body a chance to call time out, to reset, repair, regenerate, rejuvenate yourself, cause a state of refreshing tranquility. And it's that, that time where you actually get to sharpen your ax so you can get on and, and perform at the highest level possible. Some people do it through sleep. You got to make sure you have the right amount of sleep. So when you wake up the next day, you're not tired. I'm not going to tell people everyone needs eight hours. I don't do eight hours. I sleep about five and a half to six and a half hours. That's the way I've been my entire life. People think I'm crazy. They wonder how, how I have so much energy. They ask how much coffee or soda I drink. I've been in coffee in, I don't know, 10 years, soda, 20 years, you know, just a little bit of crack. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, I mean, I just have this energy because I live that dream lifestyle and I do my meditation. And I don't have an alarm clock wake me up unless I'm getting on a 4 a.m. flight, 
right? So, and that's rare that it's like once, I always wake up before my flight anyway. So relaxation is very important. E is for exercise. That's any activity that requires physical or mental exertion. So not only working out in the gym or going for a nice walk, but also doing mental exercises, crossword puzzles, reading, stimulating books or magazines that keep your mind sharp, help prevent memory loss. Very important to do physical and mental exercises. We'll skip A for a second. M is for mental wellness. That's connecting your inner purpose and passion to your outer goals and tasks in all phases of life. Being right with self-esteem, self-worth, self-values, and so on and so forth. It's the process of creating a life where when you wake up in the morning, instead of saying, oh God, it's morning. You're saying, oh God, it's morning. Like you're excited about it. You, you're putting on your armor. You're doing all the right things. You know, your affirmations again, your prayers, just surrounding yourself by positive people. There's so many things, you know, and in the book, I talk about dozens of things in every single section of the DRAM about what to do, what you should cut out, but also what you should add into your life. Um, and so when you have a strong DREM, you should stay in adjustment, which is being in balance mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, and having optimal brain body communication through the nervous system. So a lot of people think that the A in the dream is for chiropractic adjustments. It's not, it's a piece of it. You know, yes, people get adjusted, but what I want to know is, are you in adjustment? Are you in balance? Is your nervous system functioning at the highest level possible? And if not, why not? Because what causes you to go out of adjustment is the inability to adapt to a chemical, physical, or emotional stressor. The dream lifestyle helps you neutralize and avoid chemical, physical, and emotional stressors. So if you do all the things that kind of we recommend in the book or that comes up in the dream score, then you should stay in adjustment and live that healthy, happy life and put the odds in your favor to avoid autoimmune issues, um, all different types of chronic diseases and acute disorders as well. And to overcome, you know, this huge pandemic that's going on right now, they're saying the people that are that have the highest survival rate, which is the majority of America anyway, but the people that don't have the biggest issues are the ones that are the healthiest. And again, the healthiest is not necessarily the people without symptoms. It's the ones who have everything, all organ systems working right at all times. And we don't know what those are necessarily with, you know, you can't test every organ system right now. You could do a lot of different physicals, but you can't do everything. So if you know that you're doing the right things through lifestyle, that's going to additionally help put odds in your favor. All right. Thank you for sharing. So I, I know you're, you know, you recommend for everyone to see a chiropractor. How frequently do you see a chiropractor? How frequently do you get adjusted? Yeah. So I recommend that everyone see a chiropractor to make sure that they're in adjustment. So some people might need three times a week. Some people might need three times a year. It all depends. I always tell people that the intensity of your lifestyle will determine the intensity of your need for chiropractic, right? How often are you going to go out of adjustment? So the more good things you do for yourself, the more you live your dream, the less you need to see the chiropractor. The more you beat yourself up and fewer things you do for yourself living the dream, the more, you know, it just goes like that. I live the dream every, every day. So I get adjusted. I get checked by a chiropractor every two weeks or so. Um, sometimes it's a little bit longer. Sometimes it's more frequent. But typically twice a month is where I'm at. Uh, when I moved to Sarasota a few months ago, I had to meet a whole new community. First thing I did, got on Facebook, went into a, a chiropractic community of, of uh, like-minded chiropractors. And I said, who's in Sarasota that practices vitalistic chiropractic, blah, blah, blah. I got a list of names, called up a few, the one, looked at their websites, the ones that I resonated with most, become friends with them. We adjust each other now. And that's what I do. It's a bit of a drive for me. I'm not used to that. I'm used to having three offices. So I have chiropractors all over me. Um, but now I, I make the commitment to it. I make sure that I'm going to the best. I take my spinal health very importantly. Um, and I don't have any back pain or neck pain. You know, that's not why I go. I go there because it's part of my lifestyle to make sure I stay in adjustment, to check me and to make sure that my vertebrae are in proper alignment and my brain and body are in optimal communication. All right. Awesome. Uh, again, thanks for sharing. And um, and I agree. I, I'm a little bit overdue to go. To, I, I've been going to chiropractor regularly again, a little bit overdue, but I, I don't go just because I'm in pain. I go to optimize my nervous system health, my overall health. And, you know, of course, I want to prevent pain from developing, but that's not the, the main reason I, I go to a chiropractor. But a lot of people have that perception of chiropractors just being neck and back pain doctors and they should sure. shouldn't see a doctor unless if a chiropractor unless if they're experiencing back pain neck pain headaches 
So, right. um, well, and to speak to that, you know, your listeners need to understand, the world needs to understand, and I talk about this in the book, is just about 5% of the nervous system is responsible for pain. You know, you have sensory nerves and you have motor nerves. The majority of the nerves in the body don't feel pain. It needs to have a very special receptor on it called the nociceptor. And they say about 5% of the nerves in the body have nociceptors, which means more than 95% of your human experience has nothing to do with how you feel in terms of pain. So a chiropractor will help make sure that the nervous system is functioning optimally, whether you feel it or not. But most people don't realize that. But, you know, it's kind of like what dentistry was 150 years ago. You know, you'd only go to the dentist if you had a toothache, right? Now people who are wise go two to four times a year. They go for cleanings and checkups. And so that's what I recommend for anyone that doesn't have pain, that doesn't go to a chiropractor, they should go at least two to four times a year just for a checkup. And if they need adjustments, if they need correction, then they might need more than two to four times a year, but maybe they don't need it. I've had people that have come and seen me that just come and get checked. And I say, do these things and come back in a few months. We'll check you again. <coughs> so, you know, every person is different. And I do, I do cover that in the book. My book is obviously not a chiropractic book, but I do address it because it is so unknown and misunderstood that it's got to get out there somewhere. So it's nice to have a mainstream book out there that people are learning about this profession. And, you know, so many chiropractors practice differently. I mean, heck, you and I are worlds apart in terms of how we practice, but our philosophies are so in alignment, no pun intended. And so, you know, we just have our different specialties, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to find the right chiropractor for your family uh, because every chiropractor is not going to do the same thing. There are some chiropractors who will only treat you, and I don't treat patients, I serve patients, but there are some chiropractors who will only treat you if you have a complaint of pain or something like that. That's not the one you want to go to for checkups. That's not the one you want to bring your newborn baby to, to make sure that the child didn't misalign during the birth process. So you want to go to someone that is recommending a checkup for everyone to maximize the integrity of the nervous system. All right. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. And before we discuss the, the dream score, just want to let everyone know if there's any questions that you have for, for Dr. Stenzler, uh, feel free to put it in the comments and we will get to any questions briefly. But let's talk about that dream score. And again, if you want me, to, I could even share my report. I could share this the screen if you want me to, but I got, I do got my report handy if you want me to. Yeah, you can show it up if you want. Um, I'll talk about it first because it's really, you know, I refer to it as the top lifestyle assessment tool, but it's really one of a kind. There's nothing else out like, like it that I'm aware of other than like, if you're going to sign up for health insurance or something like that, and that's not truly a lifestyle assessment tool, but I created this out of necessity because if I don't want the patients coming back to me all the time with the same problems. I need to know what's causing those issues, right? And so I'd love to be a stalker and follow every one of my patients everywhere I go and see exactly where everywhere they go and see exactly what they're doing and what's triggering their issues, right? Can't do that, don't wanna to go to jail. And I'm kind of busy and I love my family, so I like being with them. So instead I created a, a survey that does not ask questions about your heart rate, doesn't ask about your blood sugar, doesn't ask about your BMI, your body weight, your blood pressure. It's not that I don't care about those things. It's that for this purpose, I don't care about those things. What I want to know is why is your blood pressure what it is? Why is your heart rate what it is, your blood sugar? Why are your relationships strained? Why your parents or your children don't want to talk to you? And so it's all questions, about 85 questions, and it takes about 20 to 25 minutes to take, and it's free. Anyone could just go to dreamwellness.com slash dream score, take the survey and check it out. But it does take 20 to 25 minutes. This is not a Facebook survey. That's going to be a minute and a half and tell you what kind of superhero or animal you are. This is a real deal lifestyle assessment tool. And so when you get, when you take the dream score, you'll get an immediate report like you're showing up there with a score. And that's that score, the report will walk you through the book. So even if you don't buy the book, you still will learn something from just taking the questions because, you know, you ever take a quiz where it's like, you know, just by taking it, what the right answers are. It's like, duh. Um, but yeah, so you take it, you'll know that. And then um, the report will give you a little bit of information. And then the book will tell you exactly what pages and chapters to look at. So if you want to scroll down a little bit or go to the second page, uh, you, they could see where you scored. You did really well. Um, we don't see a lot of people in the general public score an 89. So, and you can see that your battery is charging. So I kind of show it where, 
Um, if your battery is depleting, you know, this is like an iPhone battery, if you will. Uh, it'll go orange, then yellow, then red with the colors, and it goes further to the left with more white space on the right side. So you can see the top line of the lightning bolt is showing in high function. If you scored in the 50s, you know, you'd be somewhere there in low function. If you scored in the 20s, I haven't gotten as low as the 20s yet, but they're out there. I've gotten some in the 50s, and those are sad. I know that those people are struggling with so many different things. Um, but the report will literally walk you through the book if you so choose to go through it. So you don't have to read 460 pages. So this way you could see what are you doing in your life that you could change today? Like right now, immediately, what one thing can you change? The dream score, you just look at the first thing. It'll it'll take you to the book. You'll read that paragraph with a, three pages of a chapter if it's that much. And it'll tell you exactly what change to make. And you can implement that. And when you make enough changes, you retake the dream score. And God willing, that score goes higher. And you'll feel it too. And you'll function better. So that that's the key of the dream score. Uh, it's They're easy questions. You don't have to study for it. Um, and if you don't tell the truth on it, well, that doesn't help either. Because then you don't get uh, you don't get the benefit of it. But as you can see, you scored an 89. So you're in the optimal health range. Can't score any better than optimal health. Of course, you could score 90 or to 100. But 89 is exceptionally high. I score it harshly, um, but I tell you exactly why. Um, but I, I love when I get a report like that and I see all green bars. That's just phenomenal. That's music. And it's almost all healthcare providers that, that get the greens. So I like it when the general public gets all greens as well. Scores above an 85 or 88. So that's the dream score. Uh, if anybody in the audience, any listeners have questions about the dream score, I'm happy to field them. Uh, again, you could just go to dreamwellness.com. If you don't remember the slash, you'll see on the, on that webpage right there, just hit the dream score. Or if you remember dreamwellness.com slash dream score, you could take it. You also get it as a free bonus um, for the book at dreamwellnessbook.com. So, and there's lots of different bonuses there as well um, that we can talk about, but I, I think we're running low on time at this point. All right. No, you could talk about it. That was the next question I was going to ask you as far as just making oh. sure I'm trying to get rid of this. I almost clicked on the leave studio. Oh, yeah. Don't do that. that. Try, trying to close out. Oh, actually, no. Here's the stop sharing up here. I believe. This yeah. Way. There yeah, we go. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, yeah, the next question I was going to ask you is to share more about how people can learn, learn more about you and you know, your book, but your, so you said the book dreamwellnessbook.com is how they could get the book. Yep. Dreamwellnessbook.com. And anyone that goes to that website, whether they buy the book or not, they'll get the opportunity to take the dream score. I'm also going to give them these other bonuses, the guide to reading and understanding food packaging labels, vitamin and mineral guide, deficiencies and cravings, mastering self-love and finding peace, joy in you. It's a workbook ebook. Um, this is a huge one for those that are raising kids. Reduce screen use for kids ebook and digital detox for parents workbook. So everybody gets all those bonuses just by saying, hey, give me the instant bonuses. You, you just put in your name and email address and that'll send you the links for everything. Um, and in the book, if you do buy the book, uh, which you can buy on Amazon or you can get a signed copy from me directly, it's all on the website how to do that. Uh, then you get like another 50 bonuses like that because everything that I cover in the book, you know, like we said, it's a 460 page book. It's huge. So every chapter ends with another bonus or resource. Almost every chapter has a different bonus or resource on it. A PDF that somebody like you, another healthcare provider might have given to me or something that I did research and created. Um, so there's so much stuff. Uh, and I'm trying not to bog people down with too much information. But, you know, I at least want them to be aware of it. The wellness wiki section in the book, which is the when I cover the five facets, those are all just one to two, one to three pages. That's it. They're short. Um, they have stories, anecdotes. Some of them are funny. A lot of times you'll be laughing at me about lessons that I've learned myself. Um, some people said I should go be a comedian after this, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I had a lot of fun writing it and I have more fun when people write great reviews on Amazon for it because I've not heard anything negative yet on the book and I don't plan on it. So, you know, and uh, you know, if any of your listeners uh, do take the dream score, you know, we'd love to hear how they do. Put it in the comments or reach out to Dr. Eric, however it is that you communicate with him. And let's see how you did on the dream score. Let's see if you could beat his 89. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure some people could. <laughs> and, you know, when I went to school, you know, to me, a 90 or above was an A. So to me, it's it's like a B plus. So even with me, there's some room for improvement. Uh, a minus, A minus. 
<laughs> or yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, maybe, maybe a, a minus. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I, I like to take it again. Get get over a ninety. You know, maybe maybe get a ninety five even. So yeah, ninety five is uh, tough. I barely even get a ninety five, and I know what the questions are. So I typically hover when I answer it honestly. I typically hover now between a ninety two and a ninety four. So it's it's yeah. hard for me to get above a ninety. It's hard for anyone to get above a ninety five. I've seen a couple of them, and I'm just like, really. Yeah, okay. I guess your question. Hey, are you, yeah, if they're being. That's why I put people. 89. I started 88 at optimal health because I know that most people are not going to score in the upper 90s. Mm -hmm. It's almost it's almost impossible. You pretty much have to be a robot, which I've been accused of in the past. <laughs> All right. Well, again, if there's any questions, uh, let us know. Put in the comments. If not, that's cool too. But as far as, again, to get Dr. Brian's book, you could visit dreamwellnessbook.com. And then it sounds like when they visit that, they'll have a choice where, I mean, I'm sure they could visit Amazon directly, but if they want all the bonuses and, and other things, it's best to visit just your the, the dreamwellnessbook.com and that'll show them how to get the bonuses or... That's right. Well, they'll get the bonuses if they buy it on Amazon anyway. But if they don't uh -huh. want to buy the book and they only want the bonuses, then they should go to dreamwellnessbook.com. Or if they want to possibly buy a signed copy of the book, then they could do it right there. Because on the website, there's a link that says, I want to order the book right now. And it gives you the different options about purchasing a signed copy from me or purchase from Amazon. The price is the same. The only difference is you just have to wait a little bit longer because I'm shipping them uh, ground, uh, post office ground. So instead of getting it in a day and a half on Amazon, it takes about a week to get it and you get a signed copy, but it's the same price. Okay. And they also, there's a Kindle version as well. Yes. If they decide that they want the Kindle version. Yep. And, and then uh, I don't think there's, it's not out on Audible yet, correct? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. That's going to be a little bit, a little bit of time, but we're working on that as well. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, Dr. Brian, thank you so much. And uh, appreciate your, your time and info. And uh, again, if there's a la last call for questions, again, if there's not always questions, but many times there are. So if there's no questions, like I said, that, that no problem. At the very least, visit dreamwellnessbook.com and check out his book. And, uh, and yeah, so, and, and yeah, it sounds like there's some really good bonuses you said. So every, every chapter, there's a new bonus. Uh, that's, that's really cool. So, uh, and, the, and so one other question. So again, it is a real big book. So if someone, I, I think I heard you say, I'm not here, but I, I cheated a little bit. I, I listened to some of your other podcast episodes, whenever I try to do research on whoever I'm interviewing, just so, you know, I, I'm, I know more about them. And I think um, during another, maybe you did say it here too, but I think you said the first 100 pages is like a must read. Is that correct? Or That's right. Yeah. You, you definitely want to, you, if you're not going to read the book cover to cover, you've got to read the first, it, it, you know, it is, there's the first 100 pages is a must read. The rest of the book is a must have. So like the second and third parts of the book are basically really good references they're going to teach you everything about the lifestyle. But that first third of the book, or a little bit less, that first quarter of the book is just laying the foundation for the wellness lifestyle. You'll also get most of your chuckles out of there because that's where you get to hear all, all my crazy stories. Uh, but it's so important. That's where I talk about the paradigms, like the outside in and inside. There's so much information there, but it's not heavy information like what to do, what not to do. It's more about how to think and how to think about wellness. So yeah, you've got to read the first hundred pages. And I even mentioned that I think in the report of the dream score, I think I mentioned that there. Okay. Maybe that's why I saw it when I was looking yeah. through the dream report. So yeah, or the dream, dream really score report. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thanks. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate you uh, getting together and sharing this information. And I'll say one more time, dream book, um, dreamwellnessbook.com. Check it out. And, uh, and again, thanks everyone for tuning in. Hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your Friday, a great weekend ahead. And um, same with you, Dr. Stensler. Hope you Thank have you. A you do the same. Great to be here. Enjoy. Yeah. Take care, everyone. <laughs>